coffee dog. Yeah, my confidant. dog. I like that. I'm confidently insecure. <laughs> and they're my confidants. That's cute. Uh, we're back, baby. Woo! I've got Jasmine Robbins here again for another fun episode of Hoes Throughout History. I feel like we need a song to sing. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 hoes. <laughs> and we've made it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we also just did a workout together this morning. <laughs> So we are done. Honestly, I tried to do this laying down, then <laughs> sat up for y'all. So please appreciate this. Please, let's all take a moment of silence <laughs> for Jasmine's <laughs> fucking laziness. Um, yeah, we worked uh, out this morning. It that was, was thanks hard. for coming. Yeah. I and, we and we have tomorrow. <laughs> I really liked you being there, though. Yeah, it was better. It feels like I have... It's not so regular. Like, it feels like I have purpose. Yeah, and it's, like, fun. It's like your friend's and there. And it's, like, fun, because our friend's there, and we gang up on the instructor, which is um, preferable. <laughs> um, this week on Hoes Throughout History, let me tell you a little bit how this works. I have researched a famous hoe in history that we have not heard about. Do you think you might ever, like... What if you know one of these stories one week? I doubt I will. I feel like in history, I don't remember shit about Dick except for Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1942. Not 19. <laughs> I was like, isn't it 1492? So see, I don't know shit. So well, this now has look been it really up. Helpful. I'm, I'm oh, Columbus. 1492. 1492. Yeah, yeah. first voyage. Yeah. Um. So I'll this week. Fuck- no, we don't need to know. Columbus no, we don't want to know about him. That is the opposite of what the show is. Yeah. We are taking an iconic hoe throughout history and we are telling her story. I'm going to tell the story to Jasmine. We're going to comment. We're going to relate it to real life. It's fun. It's flirty. It's sexy. And we have our first sponsor <gasps> of the podcast. But we want to save that. We want to save that for a middle like climactic moment. Mm. No pun intended. You'll see why later. Um, but let's get fucking started, shall we? Yeah. Brr, can you sing your song again for me? Do, 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 hose. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I want to give a little bit of credit to Wikipedia where I got most of this information and a couple other articles. Uh, they will be linked in bio. But this week, Jasmine, we are telling the story about a hoe named Julie de Abney. <laughs> okay. I think it's uh, spelled Dab D Ab. How would you say that? Dabney. Mm, yeah, I don't know. It's French. Okay. AKA Madame Mupon or Mademoiselle Mupon or uh, referenced as uh, La Pon. La, La Mupon from here on out. She I had can't a couple of aliases. stand your voice <laughs> being that low. <laughs> Madame Lupin. Madame. <laughs> like, Madame are you okay? <laughs> Can I tell you guys something funny Jasmine said earlier? It was the funniest thing I've ever heard her say in the time that I've been friends with her. We were talking about getting a task rabbit for her, which is an app where you can hire people, hire people to do things for you. And <laughs> she had never used it before. No. And so she's looking through TaskRabbit where you can hire someone to do literally anything like hang shelves for you, reorganize your closet. And there was a guy on there who was, a, you know, a professional organizer. And she shows me his picture and goes, what is this guy going to reorganize my insides? <laughs> <laughs> he was very attractive. And not someone, not like I, ex- I just didn't know what to think about or what to expect. And you this man was expecting him. This be. man was fine. And I don't think I maybe being too stereotypical here, but I would have not thought a guy that looked like him was a professional organizer. organizer. Exactly. I think I said organizer. Whatever. We're not here for that. We're here <laughs> for Julie Dabney, a.k.a. Mademoiselle Mupon. You- <laughs> Kelsey, I swear. Okay, so here we go. Starting out the story. Born in 1673 in France. Okay. And I put a note here that I feel like a lot of bad bitches don't come from France in my mind because so many people from France in history feel like foo-foo, like uh, Marie Antoinette, even though yeah. Marie Antoinette was, you know, not regular. But I feel like there's yeah. never... This is like a bad bitch tale okay. from like one of the fanciest countries. I don't think I even remember this story. 
Well, why would you? Well, I don't know. I don't know. You've never heard it. I'm, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Have I? No. You're sure? Yes. Okay. Or would you have? I don't know. Oh, my God. I should probably make sure you don't know anything about these before. I, I don't believe you. I know this. Okay. So, uh, Julie Duobni, a.k.a. Madame Mupon's uh, dad's name was Gaston Duogni, which is like a Disney character fucked a croissant. Yeah. And her dad was the secretary to the horse of Louis the Fourteenth, the king. So he was the secretary to a horse. What does that even mean? Do you run errands? <laughs> you take notes. <laughs> Answer phone calls. I'm guessing that I feel like maybe he just has like the horse on standby at all times. Special and, like, appointments. Brushes it. <laughs> Bra- braids its mane. Maybe. And like cleans, cleans it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, we have no info on her mom, which like, let's come back to that okay. and see if that like bites her in the ass with mommy issues. Spoiler alert. It probably does. Are you checking your phone? No, I was just Didn't seeing you do this last is. time. I was just seeing what time it oh, is. Oh my God. Okay. Shit. So, uh, Madame Mupon, Le Mupon was very mature for her age and had learned a lot by hanging out with the court pages who were all boys okay uh because her dad had access to working for the kings and royalty and shit and so he got his daughter in there to learn what the pages learned so she basically learned like dancing reading drawing and fencing along the male pages and dressed as a boy from an early age jasmine's making a sinister you know i love right this now. Uh, like, first of all, what a bunch of extra extracurricular ass activities for yeah. those times. Like, I think you were just trying to survive and not have the plague right. back then, let alone become like a varsity sensor. Yeah. So uh, many people couldn't even like read back then, but she was reading as fuck. She was drawing as fuck. And then she was fencing like Arya Stark because apparently she became a better sword person than all of the page boys very quickly. Mm. Not to mention the androgyny. I mean, yes. this will obviously be very important later. Cough, cough. <gasps> this Does it get gay? is a queer Oh my story. gosh. <laughs> I, oh, I'm so excited. I told you this was going to be a good one. Oh, yes. Okay. So it gets a little sad first, as most of these stories this back in history do. So she was a mistress to a count uh, by the age of only 14. Oh, no. And his name was Count Darmanac. And he was like married, but uh, La Mupan was the mistress. And some say mistress, like some of the sites say, say she was a mistress, but like some say, you know, she was getting like, you know, like statutory rape. Oh, and, no. Like, age of 14. Wait, what's a mistress? A mistress is like your side hoe. So even if you're married and you're in a committed relationship, you're like my secret side hoe. Yeah. So wouldn't she be, wouldn't it be statutory no matter what? Yeah, for sure. I mean like in our times, but I think back then it was like, was she doing it willingly? We don't know. Like was she just trying to be sneaky, like sexually awoken at that age or was like some sketchy shit happening? We don't know. Uh, But this count uh, had her married off to a man named Sue de Maupin of St. Germain. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? And the only reason why he married her off was because she needed to have status of being a married woman or else he, the count didn't think she would get to go very far in life. So, like, she didn't really actually marry this guy So for he was love. like, I'm not marrying you, obviously. Yeah, because I'm... <laughs> In a, are you crying? No, I just yawned. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it's these early sad. morning workouts are like really hard on Fucking me. with you? Yeah. I need to move my microphone. I'm going to sit up. There we go. Yeah, no, we're trying to be awake for you guys. <laughs> we're um, really trying here. Okay, so, so she got married and that's where she got the nickname La Mupon like, or, or Maupin. We're not really sure. It's French. I'm going to call her Mupon. Sorry, his story ends if that's not the right way to say her name. I don't care. Um, So she gets married off. But then some say literally the day after she got married to this guy, he went off to the north of France to get a job as like a accountant. And she was like, good, bye. I got your last name. And that's all I wanted. Yeah. She only just wanted to get married anyway. Yeah. 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 Okay. So she stayed in 
the south of France with the count and the count kept her in Paris for his own purposes. Like he still was like, I don't want my side hoe to be too far. Right. Um, but I have like a little bit of a problem with this because there's so much of like other men deciding her future. I mean, that's how it was. Yeah. That's how it was. Like the count that that's not even her dad. No. Like that's where's what, her fucking dad? Where is her this? dad? That's weird. She's 14. I have a theory that maybe the dad was like, Ooh, you're hanging out with a count. He's like royalty. Like I want the best for What's you. What's a life. count? I only knew Count Chocula, which is like... Or Dracula, the, yeah. Or Dracula, so I'm not really sure, but he's like royalist. Oh, okay. I, like the royal vampire? Maybe he invented cereal back then. <laughs> I don't know. Wow, I would love that. That history. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on next host around history. <laughs> so she gets married, but then this Count is like, no, nah, I want you to stay here in Paris and be my own plaything, even though you're already married and I'm married. Like... At this point, I feel like Julie Mapon is like, yeah, men are kind of trash at this yeah. point. Like, I feel like she's kind of like, I'm not in control of my own life, yada, yada, yada. But just wait. This count will come back later in the story. Oh, shit. But like, let's put a pause on him. Okay. So she was about 17 when La Maupin got involved with an assistant fencing master. And his name was Serrans. And Serrans is not your typical stay in the shadows type of assistant coach of fencing. He was a bad boy. Really? Like this gave La Mupan her first taste of like the criminal gang gang life because Serrans was a wanted man. Oh, can you guess why he was wanted? Well, he was a wanted man, but was also teaching people how to fence. Yeah. It was like low key. He was like wanted. No, I can't guess because most criminals, you know, they're criminals. Yeah, well, he has a sword with him. Oh, he was stabbing people? Yeah, he was, like, stabbing bitches on the side. Oh. So he was wanted... Like, women? No, men. Oh. Like, oh. illegal duels. What? Yeah, that... so it was illegal to do a duel back then unless it was, like, <laughs> I guess, public and announced and had a purpose. Oh. But he so was just, it's like... it's not a big deal. But <laughs> what, is, what is the first place you would look for a fencing criminal is like a fencing assistant <laughs> wouldn't that be the first but place you like would maybe that's why he was an assistant because he was like i'm gonna hide yeah. under the guise of like my coach and not be maybe. too much in the forefront that's funny that's really funny <laughs> um so he was a bad boy and was wanted and he like i also was like is fencing as dangerous now as what it was back then? Because, like, weren't the swords covered with, like, a little pointy plastic and you can't, like, hurt somebody? I truly have only seen fencing, like, on the parent trap. <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't dangerous. Like, I didn't know you could kill bitches by fencing. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, depending on the protection, right? I guess. Yeah. Okay, so he was a fence killer, whatever. Um, so they did not cover the needles back then. He killed a man. Police are looking for him. So he takes La oh, Malpan. He killed somebody. Yeah. He killed someone. And he's like, we got to skedaddle out of Paris. Let's go to Marseille, which is also in France and like really not that far. So I was like, how bad was he trying to escape? Did you aid? just go there? Yeah, I did go to Marseille were, were, for a day. Did you? I did. How was it? Did it was you, fine. Did you fence? No. Hmm. I just caught a train and my bus driver was so hot, but that's not important. Mm. So on the road south to Marseille, or Marseille, depending on how you say it, <laughs> depending how it's spelled, Marseille, it, M A R S E I L L E. Oh, never mind. <laughs> so on the way to Marseille, Le Maupin and Serrans made a living by giving fencing exhibitions and singing, mm. which was another talent she had learned in childhood. They did this like singing and fencing show in taverns. And One at, of a kind. <laughs> at local <laughs> fairs, like some real carny ass performance theater shit. Wow. And while traveling and performing in these improv shows, La Mupan dressed in male clothing, but did not conceal her sex. So she was like an androge queen. Oh. We don't know exactly what male clothing was considered to be like back then because yeah. men kind of dress a little bit femme with wigs and makeup and shit back then too. But we know she was rebellious that's all yeah. we know yeah yeah at one show a man refused to believe she was really a woman because she was simply too good with her fencing skills so in front of a crowd she took off her blouse and shook her titties at them and said you decide 
Ooh. <laughs> she was like, oh, really? You don't think I'm a woman? You decide. You hear me, Rory. Hear my boobs. Listen here. That's wow. pretty ballsy. Very. So once she got to Marseille, she decided to join an opera company because she was so good at singing. Okay. So when she's not singing like full time in this opera company, she's getting kind of bored with Saran's. Mm-hmm. And I like to think it's because when she joined the opera, it's like joining musical theater and musical theater opens up like all the gabies to like yeah. queer light. I mean, like I know it did for me for sure. Mm. Were you in musical theater at all? No, you weren't. No. Oh my God. I feel like that's like the in for a lot of, of a lot of queer kids in high school. Oh, sports were that for us. Oh, you were volleyball. Yeah. Which I feel like is all a the lesbians, lesbo mm-hmm. and softball. Uh, yeah. And basketball. Honestly, anything where there's girls, there's lesbians. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> um, I thought of this like so much. Sh- so at five 30 in the morning that I was like, why is gay culture and musical theater so intertwined? And it's like a bit stereotypical of me, but here's the answer. According to Google, um, James Finn from medium says in the early days of theater, uh, theater people, uh, they were different. They weren't like tolerated, like normal society members. The theater had roots in tropes of low class wanderers who were often socially unacceptable. They were like, you gay, you out. Yeah. So like actors and even professional musicians were seen as rather more like a little shady and well-born polite people didn't even associate that with them. So we see celebrities now as like, Oh my God, the creme de la creme. Everything. But like back in the day, only a couple centuries ago, people were like, these people are queer trash. Wow. Interesting. Right. Huh? Um, Very interesting. Yeah. Well, I always thought of, um, musical theater as like a gay guy thing. More than like, uh, Yeah. I guess I could see that. Well, yeah. I feel like the audience is really gay men. Like yeah. the following is gay men. I f- that's what I feel like gay men love musical theater. <laughs> that is true. Not a stereotype. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, okay. So anyway, back to our girl, La Mau Pan. Uh, she's getting bored with her old fencing buddy, probably because she's so much better at selling in a sword than he is and falls in love with a woman. And I feel like this is a really good time to take a quick pause. Oh, um, because what happens next with her story, you truly won't fucking believe. So you're going to want to stay tuned while I read our first ad. Just to tell you a little bit about a product called ho to go oh my gosh tell me kelsey what a better pro what like better product could be sponsoring this episode of hoes throughout history than the product ho to go that is number two go h-o number two go dot co you're probably wondering what is ho to go jasmine uh let me tell you it is a bag (laughs) That every hoe should have. First of all, it's so cute. It's, it's in a this, really like, cute fucking bag. What did you, what do you describe this as? This metallic? Color? Metallic. No, holographic. Hollow. It's like a metallic hollow bag that says ho to go mm-hmm. on it. And it carries everything you would need for a night not staying at your own place. It's cute. So we're talking one night stands. We're talking bachelorette parties. We're talking birthday gifts. We're talking Valentine's Day. We're talking I keep it when I go on airplanes. Mm. This is like my airplane bag. Oh, that's cute. And let me tell you a little bit about what's inside. You've got a pair of sandals to take off your heels when you're done being a little giraffe ass hoe with your heels. Yes. You get a bag that you can put your clubbing clothes in Mm -hmm. so that you can change into your leggings that you can pick your size and your soft ass how to go t-shirt you're also included with a velour jewelry patch so that you can take off your big hoops wow right and you also get a pair of sunglasses. Big sunglasses. For when you're kind of hungover and you have to go walking to your car the next morning. <gasps> you also get a towelette deodorant that you can use on your poo nanny for when you have all that sex because you're a hoe. A hair tie and Advil. Yes. And you also get a handy dandy little hoe to go toothbrush. Is that what this is? Yes. With oh, toothpaste. Oh, oh, wow. So you literally have everything this you is, need. This is really cute. I know. 
isn't it? So it's everything you need for a night out when you're not sleeping at home, whether you're going to go be a little slut slut and need to do a walk of pride the next morning, yeah. or if you're just traveling and you need like a cute little bag to change into some comfy stuff. I mean, like I said, it's great as a gift Two, it's only $30. That's a, that's like a cute gift. Honestly, the bag alone I would pay $30 for because it's such a cute little... Oh, and you get chapstick. <gasps> I didn't see that. Look at this cute little chapstick. It's like the size of a little tampon. Mm-hmm. Um, where you can get it, you can follow them on Instagram at H-O, the number two, go, dot co. Or if you want to buy it, you can get it at H-O, number two, go.co and you can use a very exclusive special discount Ooh. for all of our confidants you can get 10 percent off using the code ho yeah spelled h-o-y-e-a-h ho yeah how to go go get it yo i love it okay i'm gonna put this over here that's really cute it is really cute i'll give you this one if you want Thanks. it you're welcome Let's get back to our current hoe that we've been talking about. Yes. La Mupan. She's officially queer. She falls in love with a woman. Love it. What happens next? Like I said, you won't fucking believe. It's been pretty Mm. basic shit. She falls in love with a woman. So she struggles with her identity, goes back into the closet and dates men for the rest of her life. Half right. Okay. Um, so Ma Pan, whatever her name is, falls in love with a woman who is charmed by her opera ass fighting sword slinging shit. No shit. But the girl that she falls in love with, who we never have, we never get this woman's name. Do you want to name her? Um, no. (laughs) Okay. We're just going to call her girl. Mm -hmm. The girl's family never knows that she's queer. Go figure. So as soon as they find out that she's seeing Mupan, they quickly pack her off to a fucking covenant. No. Which just screams gay conversion therapy. Yeah, yeah. So La Mupan followed her (gasps) to this covenant and entered the covenant taking holy vows pretending to be a nun. Oh, so she went undercover as a nun. She went fucking undercover for Poonan. Like, you have to be super duper in love to follow a chick into conversion therapy. Yeah, and to... You know, that's honestly, like... Bold. But smart. And committed. No one's gonna guess the nun. (laughs) And you're surrounded by women. Yeah. Who are not getting laid, so. And they're gay. They're all gay. They're all gay. Because they're for Jesus, but they're actually gay. No, but if they're going there for like, if they're being sent there for conversion therapy, then. (gasps) So you're, it's literally like. You're literally there with gay people. What a dream. Yeah. And hopefully she can stop. What's happening? What's happening? Well, Jazz, I'm glad you brought that up because she oh. sure does try to stop yes. it all from happening. In order to be in l- with her lover yeah. uh, to, out of this covenant, one night after an elderly nun died, the pair stole that nun's body. So my alarm bells are going off. Like, hold on. We just went from like a cute little love story <laughs> to like psychopathic tendencies real quick. Like... I'd like to think they stole the body, not because they killed her, but just because they, like, happened upon a dead nun, right? Um, I might need a little bit more to the story. Sorry, why? Where would they take it? They took the body and put it in the bed of the girl so people wouldn't know she was missing. Mmm, that's pretty literal. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Questionable. But still for love. For love. So anyway, they take... So what? They Where did they hide her during the day? So they put the body... Well, here's the thing. They put the body in the bed, and then they lit the whole covenant on fire. <laughs> what? Why did they need to set the dead nun on fire? Why did they need to put the nun there anyway? Like, do one or the other. Either put the nun in the bed and then run, or just set the whole thing on fire. Do you think they set the nun there to be like yeah we saw her in the bed i don't know like if any witnesses were like we saw well did you see her and she was like yeah she was asleep oh like maybe they faked her death oh but (sighs) wouldn't you 
all sketchy, okay. all very sketchy, but we're all going to say like it was for love. Right. Okay. So then these two were on the run for three months on some real Bonnie and Clyde shit, but just Bonnie and Bonnie. And <laughs> in their absence, Mopan was blamed for setting the fire because they obviously like couldn't find her. Yeah. And she was sentenced to death by a court. Uh, but, you know, she's on the run run. So she's like, I don't care. You can sentence me to death you can't find me like come and catch me yeah but the judge are these your teeth no that's my retainer oh oh my god have you never seen this no this is my like oh that's the one i thought retainer. i broke yeah you thought you let broke me see my your teeth, teeth. They're, they're, they're also an exact just as replica. good. Well, yeah. it's an exact replica of my teeth wow. it's just built up an inch higher so that my jaw doesn't um compress on the nerves how did i never knew that because i just got them the other day oh okay <laughs> Hold on while I put my teeth back in like I was an like, eight-year-old woman. Fuck, those teeth are so good. Uh-uh. They look like real teeth, right? One hundred percent. But I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? I know. I wanted like, to do an not like your about teeth it. were ever bad. No, but I was they're, just they, like, they're an exact replica. Holy of my actual shit! Teeth. Like yeah. you take molds and everything. Does it hurt? No, it feels exactly like teeth. And you can eat with them. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Revolutionary, right? Go off. <laughs> Okay, so Mupan uh, is like, you can sentence me to death. I don't care. Like, do whatever you want. I'm on the run. Yeah. But here's the thing. The judge that sentenced her to death sentenced her under the name Sir Mupan because she, the judge didn't believe that a woman could do such a crime. Uh, I've heard that before in like old times. Which is hilarious to me because the, the judge is like, let's just give them a neutral ass like, sir pronoun yeah rather than going like madam or so maestro or whatever so what happened oh i'm glad you asked i shall keep going yeah uh so she's like uh on the run and she continues her escapades into the countryside and we don't know why but apparently the girl her lover was returned to her family uh, so either she went on her own yikes. and was like i can't handle you baddie like you set fire like you find out your ex is a little cry cry yeah or maybe the girlfriend was caught but Mm -hmm. all we know is that she went back to the family and Mopan is on her own again so now she's back in men's clothing and uh she bumps literally into a man on the street called de albert de albert de albert who apparently was an important son of a duke who challenged her to a duel not realizing she was female because she ran into him on the street okay so it's like those guys outside of the club that's like bro did you just fucking run into me yeah you just shoulder check me bro and he's like i'm gonna fucking duel you right now okay so she was like "Ugh, okay fine watch me go off on this duel and she takes a needle and fully stabs him in the shoulder and is like bitch i told you i could beat you a needle like her needle, her needle point thing. Weird. Her sword. Oh. Her sword. I thought you meant <laughs> Needle <laughs> is the name of Arya Stark's sword. So I think I just went with that. Okay. So not only did she beat him by putting a sword through his shoulder, she nursed him back to hell <gasps> and then was like, look, dude, we don't need to be enemies. Let's be friends. Yeah. And so they became best friends over that. Okay. So some people say that they might have been like fucking around together. But she basically was like, I'm going to befriend you so that you can see that women can be the best swords people of all For time. Sure. Um, so it seems like at this point, like our girl's got kind of a heart, right? Yeah. Like, how old do you think she is? Oh, I'm glad you asked because literally my next sentence is, by the way, all of this is still happening in the same year that she left Saran's. So she had just turned 18 by the time all of this had happened. What? So she figured out she was a lesbian mm-hmm. or bisexual mm-hmm. or pans. Okay. We, anything. She's an androge. Anything queen other than straight. Who's stabbing bitches left and right. Easy. And set a fire. May or may not have killed a nun and put the body and then set a fire to the covenant. Did people die in that? I don't know, but I'm going to guess. Yeah. Probably. So she's like, she's been through it. Uh, yeah. But a little bit. Her own fault. Her own fault. (laughs) She's fucking wild and it only gets crazier. Really? So she's with, you know, the Duke's son, the her best friend De De Andre or De Albert. I was gonna say De Andre. Oh my gosh. (laughs) She's with De Albert and De Albert's in uh the military. So he's like, I gotta go. You 
do your own thing. I got to go into the military. And so okay. once again, Mupan is on her own. She's single. Uh, and so she decides to take singing lessons because she was so good in the opera before she, you know, set fire to that covenant where she found a new lover. Do we know her birthday? Uh, no, only in 16. Damn, I would love to know her sign. Probably a fucking Leo. You think so? She's an attention whore like me. Ah, uh, don't you think? But she always needs to be around someone. Mm, maybe I wonder what Gemini? that is. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. But okay. Anyway, so she decides to take singing lessons, and in her singing lessons, she meets her new lover named. <laughs> Stop that. I'm sorry. Named <laughs> the Venard, who fancied himself as a singer as well. Oh, okay. So she decides she's like, "You sing, I sing. Let's go back to Paris together." And so when they go back to Paris together, Mupon went to visit her old lover, the Count, but not to go get dick. She goes to be like, "Hey, Zaddy." You're part of royalty. Can you help arrange a pardon for me because I'm sentenced to death for this covenant fire and you have pool with the royals and the judges. And so. Wait, what happens when you're sentenced to death? I thought they then kill you. If you get caught, they were going to hang her, but she didn't get caught. So she like sneaks back into Paris and is like, hey, daddy, can you help me? Yeah. And the count has some royal pool. So he was like, look, I'm going to see what I can do. Just stay out of trouble while you're here and let me like figure the sitch out and see if I can get you pardoned. For sure. So she's like totally using this guy. Good for her. Get hers after all those years. He was like having sex with her when she was underage. Yeah. So Mupon is like staying undercover with the Venard, her new lover, and they decide to audition for the opera and Thenard was hired immediately, except his one condition was that Mupon also had to be allowed to audition, even though she was like wanted for murder uh, and setting a fire. And the opera was like, okay, fine. We'll let her audition. And she's fucking incredible. And they're like, great. You're both hired. And by the age of 18, she found herself at as a member of one of the world's greatest musical companies in Paris, all because her boyfriend was like, it's either both of us or none of us, which is some real ride or die shit. Right. And Mupan was like a player. And she's like, wow, bitches really fall for me all the time. So yeah. I'm just going to like use this to my advantage. Yeah. Also, it is said that La Mupan had a near photographic memory and rarely needed to read her lines once before committing them to memory. I wish I'm really bad with lines. Are you memorizing lines often i mean when we have to like host shit oh yeah do you just make it your own though sis uh, but mm, i get nervous you should take some htp5 for that what it's a pill that helps your memory and fish oil really <sighs> anyway okay back sorry. to mupon Meanwhile, with the help of her new opera status and her old buddy, the Count, with the connections, she was pardoned by Louis, the whatever number we're at at this point with the king. Okay. And went on to become a star of the opera, appearing all in all the opera's major productions as the star. Okay. And at first, she was a soprano and fought to let women sing lower as altos. She's like, I don't want to be a shrill lady. Let me find my base like Lady Gaga. Yeah. So she was like pretty um, important in the opera scene for letting women Damn. sing lower. Like she started that movement. Wow. Right? So due to Mademoiselle de Mupon's beautiful voice and her acting skills and her androgynous attire, she became quite popular with the audience. Okay. And, uh, you know, with all of that beauty and talent, she got into a couple of affairs with some of her fellow actor and actress uh, opera co-workers. Okay. She famously beat one of the most famous singers, Louis Garrard Dumens, and stole his pocket watch after he was pestering women of the troupe. So this guy was like fucking with all the women in the opera. And she uh-huh. was like, uh-uh, little boy. And supposedly she met him in an alley one day after work, after they were singing opera, and beat the shit out of him. <gasps> and took his pocket watch. And then the next day, <laughs> when this dude shows up to work, and everyone's like, oh my God, why do you have black eyes? He's like, Oh, these big dudes jumped me in an alley. She pulls out the pocket watch and was like, oh, really, bitch? Some dudes beat you up? And she like dangled the pocket watch and was like, 
beg for forgiveness and for your watch back. And supposedly this really famous singer got on his knees and oh my apologized to all the women of the troop. Wow. So she was like protector mama bear. Yeah. Like, yes, she was using violence to get all this. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. She had some, she had some fucked up ways. Honestly. She had some fucked up ways, but I feel like back in the day, what choice did she have? True. This man <sighs> shows up to set and she pulls out a watch and is like, you're late. <laughs> Pulls out his, his fucking watch. watch. <laughs> um, she also had a legendary duel of wits with her lover, Thvenard, the one that she joined the opera with. Okay. And was the talk of Paris one night when during a show they were having a spat and when they were doing a scene, she bit his ear so hard that it almost came off. <gasps> <laughs> like some real Mike Tyson Yeah, shit. she's a little rough around the edges. She's scrappy. Yeah. Like, where's her dad? Uh, <laughs> like all of this. Yeah. Um, she also fell in love with uh, another one of her female singer co-stars. Love it. And the female singer had to choose between her or this, like, famous dude, Dutch guy. And the female singer chose the male. Of and course. so our girl, Mupon, tried to commit suicide. Oh, no. We don't know how, but we know that it wasn't successful. Okay. So that's good. Yeah, that's she, really sad. That's, like, a bit of a dark time in her life. Okay. It seems like people really fall for her, and she also really falls for people. I feel like, though... The only two examples we have of her really falling for people are women. With women. Because the men, she's been, like, using a lot of right. guys, you know, like, needed status, mm-hmm. needed, you know, to be pardoned, needed, yes. like, to go, like, start a new life. But anybody she's had, like, like, she set fire for this <laughs> other woman and I then... set fire. Literally. To the nun. And then wanted to... Yeah. Like, not be alive anymore for this yeah. other woman. And it seems to, like, that's a, such a good point. She's also in her 20s at this point, And I feel like everything is so heavy yeah. in those days. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, the most in love I ever thought I was was in high school. No shit. And, like, oh, my God. It was just everything. And, like, I've definitely been in those moments of, like, I don't want to be alive if I can't be with this person. But time heals oh my gosh all motherfucking yes i was legit like my first girlfriend i thought like this is it what how old were you is 17 oh my god legit i was like this is the person i'm gonna be with here's the thing oh i look now and i'm like you laugh right i look at it fondly like oh like how cute but also your emotions and fucking hormones are just so high at that age like I cannot tell you, dear listener confidants, how much you will change so between much. the age of high school and Shit. fucking even just every year from high school to liter- even till this year. I'm still changing Y'all, this person. Your life is not going to start Mm-mm. until your late 20s. And they just changed the age of average happiness to be 36. Love it. From 30, they moved it up six years. I. <laughs> I want to be 32 so bad. Oh, well, you're 27. I'm 28. 28. I just turned 29. <gasps> you're older than me. I know. It doesn't feel like it. No. Because you have your shit so much more together. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Oh. And more Instagram Honestly, followers. I'm just going to, I'm just going to let, I'm going to take that because we you know should. I don't, but. No, that's not true. I truly believe in my heart and soul. Oh. Um, okay. So basically after she like got her mental energy and strength back together, <gasps> that's my my oh, instacart should i go get it jasmine entertain <laughs> the it, people go get it okay hi guys Tell um a story. all right so <laughs> i don't really have a story Tell my first girlfriend. okay my first girlfriend um she was really thank you thanks she was sweet honestly um i'm trying to think when's oh kelsey got kelsey got Kelsey got that food. I'm just getting my hard-boiled eggs. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Sorry, I've never I'm ordered not. hard-boiled eggs like that. What? I always make my own. Oh. You're going to eat all of these? Not all of them. Just, like, one. Can I eat one while we film, or is that gross? Whatever. It's my podcast. I can do whatever I want. You can. Okay. So, this is about to be ASMR real fucking quick. What did you say about your girlfriend? I can't listen to this. 
Oh like, my god, okay. I no, won't. no, no, I won't. eat it, eat no, it. No, I won't. I'll eat wait. it. No, I'll eat wait. it, eat oh, it. Oh, wait, we're almost done. Are you we're sure? Done. Yes. Okay. I can't we're almost listen. done, dear listener. Sorry, <laughs> it's like one of those things when I, I like can't listen to Mesophonia, chewing. Mesophonia or whatever it's called? No, I don't know. Oh, okay. I call it, I will literally punch you in the throat. <laughs> Oh my God. We don't want, you're turning into Mupan with your violence. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So, <sighs> ew, but you can That's do that. That's what it would sound like. <laughs> but you can fucking do that, you sicko. That's what it would sound Ugh. like. Okay. <clears throat> so, after our girl Mupan got her shit together, mental energy back together, okay. she was popping off in her career in her late 20s and she's in Paris being a star and she goes to attend this court ball okay and she shows up in a motherfucking tuxedo oh like full men's clothes love it and she's dancing around being a hoe and all of a sudden decides to tongue kiss a young woman <gasps> on the dance floor which apparently was a huge insult and no one could believe she did it so publicly and three men three noblemen at the court's ball challenged her to a duel and she told each of them yeah bitch meet me outside how about that? Uh, uh, and she fought all of them at once and beat them all. all. Shut up. But given that Louis the whatever number we're on had outlawed duels and he had already pardoned her, he was like, bitch, I already gave you a chance. She had to flee to Brussels. Okay. So she went to Belgium, which isn't far from France. So like, again, she wasn't trying that hard. She was like, eh, let me just like disappear for a little bit. Right. Um, she wow. found a lover there. Uh, he was the elector of Bavaria. So like, again, high royalty male. Yeah, she's really getting in there. Yeah. So he found her, though, to be a little bit too much to handle. Heard that before. You don't say. After she stabbed herself on stage with a real dagger during a performance which is some jewels ass and euphoria shit yeah i love the commitment and he offered her forty thousand francs to leave him alone <gasps> apparently she threw the coins at his feet and stomped off to madrid drama to she was madrid. like i don't want your fucking money i'll just fucking leave <clears throat> again doesn't want men yeah, yeah. She really doesn't seem to attach. Yeah, she's like, bye. She didn't even take his money. So I thought this was a really funny story. She, like, didn't have anything to do when she's in Madrid. So uh -huh. she decides to get hired as a lady's maid. Again, uh -huh. trying to surround herself with women. Oh, wow. Uh, to a countess whom she did not like so much that one night before a grand ball, she was dressing the countess up and she was doing her hair and she put radishes in the countess's hair and she couldn't see them. So everyone at the ball saw that this bitch had radishes in her hair and she fired Mupan and <laughs> sent her back to Paris. <laughs> you know what'll get her? Radishes. <laughs> Aren't radishes like stinky? No, no, not that I know of. Oh, well, that's really. But funny. I've only seen radishes. I don't even know if I've seen one in real life. I feel like they put radishes in street tacos. No, uh, you've never seen one in real life. What do you mean? I don't think I have. <laughs> I've only seen one in a painting in my mom's kitchen. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think I've seen Wait, a radish. Let me Google what a radish. I know looks what they like. look like because of the painting. You've seen a radish i don't think i've ever seen a radish yes you have in real life look cut up they look like red on the outside and white on that's a radish <laughs> they put them in street tacos i've, I've never had i don't even know if you've I've, never had a street taco i don't think so jasmine i cannot with you right now we cannot dive into this <laughs> this is a whole nother podcast you psycho uh, okay so she put the radishes in the bitch's hair and the bitch was like go back to paris buy fleece right so she was like okay I'm going back to Paris. And at this point, she goes back to Paris and she falls in love with Madame La Marquise de Florensac. Love it. Who was known at that time in Paris as the most beautiful woman in France. Wow. Yeah. I mean, um, it's kind of a shame that she fell in love with the most beautiful person in France because like she probably wants to be a little low key. Yeah. Cause and she, she was like dueling. She was making out was with girls. Wealthy, well connected, like yeah. was the talk of town. Yeah. But they were together and they, they decided to leave for, uh, Paris because they were so shunned upon okay. that they went back to Brussels because 
Mupan was like, I was in Brussels chilling for a while and no one bothered me about being gay and shit. Yeah. So they went to flee Brussels for several years, three years exactly. Okay. Until our beautiful Madame La Marquise de La Fransac died of a fever. Womp womp. This bitch. You mean to tell me she in her life set a fire and then died of being too hot? No, her lover. Oh. <laughs> was like the karma still though the karma jumped so the lover dies left her her money left her everything but (laughs) she was too distraught to carry on so what does she do she gives away all of her things and goes to live in a covenant back where the fucking nunnery where she started Really? So she goes all the way back to a covenant. And at the age of 33, she dies in a covenant. And she was supposedly so shunned upon for her gayness and evil in the sight of God that her body was cast upon rubbish heap and she has no grave. (gasps) Oh. So Mao Pan, a gay icon. Mm-hmm. lived back in it that's some twisted shit though that she went back to a covenant honestly okay she was uh, she was going she probably needed like a therapy she session she was traumatic yeah, yeah she went through a trauma. lot do you think maybe she was like my one female lover died so i'm gonna go back to like my roots and try and like repent or like yeah it sounds like she was trying it was either two things one she was trying to make things right or two she was trying to make things comfortable mm. like she was there before she knows what they're yeah. like and everything like and maybe that. she went back like you said because there was a bunch of queers there yeah and she was like this is gonna be my space yeah but 33 is such a young age to die it really is it, they don't say how she died some assume fever or sickness but there was no like mysterious circumstances but also the fact that they just threw her body on like a pile of garbage which makes me wonder if they had something to do with it. I know. That's messed up. Yeah. So all in all, it is said that La Mupan killed 11 men in total with her sword to steal their women. So I would like to crown La Mupan as the original Mr. Steal Your Girl. Wow. And that, Jasmine, is our hoe throughout history this is crazy isn't it crazy that you don't hear about this shit? yeah like why the fuck do i care about king louis the first through 75 yeah whatsoever when we've got like crazy ass stories like this it just would have been cool to at least know that this was an option to learn about yeah you know like if the teacher was like hey i'm not gonna teach you this but yeah. There's this. There here's this. And I feel like there was a book, there was a some like Shakespearean type guy wrote a book about her and they actually banned anyone from reading it because it had such gay undertones of for course, a while. Of course. But it wasn't until like 2003 when someone finally rewrote the book and there was like a maybe a movie made. But still, Damn. we don't give enough attention to these hoes. Mm-hmm. Literally. Like I feel like our last girl Matahari also wasn't oh. given enough. She was great. Right? Someone yeah. sent me a picture that they saw her wax figure in a Ripley's Believe It or Not wax museum or something. No. Yeah. Wow. So she's out there. It's like, it's just like these last two stories. Um, the thing that fucks me up the most is that their, their stuff starts so young. Yeah. Like they're expected to be full ass women. Yes. Functioning women uh-huh. at like. 14 and 15 right and like in france which was supposed to be more of a like high flute in society type country yeah. i mean like i don't know if maybe her father just wanted her to have a good life so he was like hang out with all these royalties but like where you know she didn't have a mom it sounds like right. like who yeah. knows what and that's what the last one too yeah her mom ran away right yeah yeah it's so like circumstantially there's probably a lot of trauma that For comes sure. from like your parents and shit but it seems like you know she had the taste of the good life with her fame with the opera like she was famous she had money at points in time in her life but it seems like underneath it all she was just kind of like this rough around the edges yeah. street smarts kind of makes me sad for them yeah so she is considered to be 
by the history books bisexual but yes i wonder what we would consider her today as like someone who dressed so androgynous yeah yeah because i wouldn't like, call her butch maybe like gender fluid yeah Ooh, a bisexual gender fluid yeah i like that for her yeah for sure because she didn't she doesn't seem like she cared a lot no of being like referred to like no you have to call me ma'am how do you feel about the term tomboy um i think it's a little outdated i think so too i was called a tomboy my whole life growing up yeah i also dressed i'm making air quotes like a boy yeah. and i had a short um pixie like blonde bowl cut yeah and like oh, wow. i would often get m- mistook mistaken mistaken for a boy yeah when i would go out and my nanny said that she would constantly having to be like it's a girl interesting <laughs> she's a girl yeah and I just wonder. Yeah, I feel like it's, I don't know, whenever I think of tomboy, one, I think of more of it being a, f- a style preference. Yeah. Um, and then two, I think of it being just like outdated style. Style is so fluid yeah. and people associate it so much with your like sexuality yeah. that I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, I guess too, like we're seeing it more now with people like, you know, um jonathan van ness yeah. and um who else what's the guy from pose <sighs> billy yeah billy porter uh-huh. and uh who else is the other person i'm seeing but we're seeing more and more celebrities now who are men you know identify as men that aren't afraid to wear like i a think skirt jonathan is um non-binary oh is he yeah is they yeah does he still go by he i think they they but i could be wrong Huh. But I thought I saw that they out? were. Yeah, Jonathan maybe. Jonathan Van Ness, non-binary. Yeah, came yeah. out in June. Yeah. Go off. Mm-hmm. Cute. Yeah. Well, I think I it's... I wonder when that'll be transitioned into the show. Yeah, because they already filmed this season. Yeah, I wonder. Um, anyways. Anyways, and I think, like, we're seeing a lot more, you know women identifying people wearing tuxes oh yeah i mean that's been around janelle monet's been on that shit for years yeah Uh, and i think if anything like you're someone who also wears whatever the fuck they want and i think i wish like we were uh given the choice at a younger age for sure dress however you want yeah let your fucking kid pick their own outfit yeah it doesn't matter like even if they walk out in a fucking parka who cares you rock that parka you rock the parka honey um okay that does it for this, this week's episode thank you so much Jess, again thank for being you. here you guys loved that last episode of host throughout history so much we had never gotten so much engagement and feedback for an episode this season i love so it hope you guys love this we hope jazz you will come back for yes. more we'll try and make this a fun little segment thing that we do maybe we can have someone join us too Ooh, that might be cute Ooh, cute maybe not maybe we just keep it between us because we love ourselves maybe um don't forget to rate this on itunes it really does help five stars or don't read it at all because I'm very sensitive and I can't take that <laughs> uh, don't forget to follow us at confidently pod on Twitter and Instagram you can email us <gasps> at confidently pod confidently it's your podcast at gmail.com love it or if you feel like you have someone you want me to interview I've gotten a lot of great suggestions via email so please keep on sending uh, and don't forget to check out how to go and use that discount code ho oh yeah for 10% off your order and we will see you next week bye confidant bye Bye.